Hello boys and girls. We've got another story of Ooh's friends. And this friend is Piglet and he's the little person. We had Rue last time, which is little, and so this is Piglet. And this is called A Perfect Little Piglet. One winter afternoon, not long after lunchtime, Piglet found himself hurrying through the hundred acre wood. He was on his way to Pooh's house for a tea party and he didn't want to be late. Oh, bother, he huffed, wishing his legs were longer. But soon enough, he was knocking on Pooh's door. Come in, said Pooh. Standing on his tiptoes, Piglet reached for the doorknob to let himself in. Hello, Piglet, Pooh said cheerfully. Have you been running? Piglet just nodded, trying to catch his breath. As Piglet made himself comfortable, Pooh carefully set the table. Piglet, would you mind taking down the teacups? Pooh asked as he busied himself with a jar of cookies. They're in the cupboard, right behind you. Piglet opened the cupboard door, but he didn't see any teacups. They're on the top shelf, Pooh said helpfully, spreading honey on the cookies. Piglet stepped back and looked up. There were the teacups in a neat row high above his head. Piglet glanced over at Pooh, then back at the teacups. Then he jumped as high as he could, stretching to reach inside the cupboard. Are you all right? Pooh asked, for Piglet had knocked over the stool on his way down. No, I'm not, Pooh. I'm too small, too small to run fast and too small to reach teacups. Piglet said sadly. Folks are all that are little can't do anything right. Piglet sat. Who set Piglet's stool straight, then brought down the cups. What about bees? Pooh said thoughtfully. Bees, Piglet repeated. Bees are much, much smaller than you, Pooh said. And they do something very important. They make honey. And of course, Pooh would know that, wouldn't he? That's his favorite thing to eat. Piglet thought about this as he drank his tea and ate his cookies. Pooh was right, he decided. Bees were important. But I'm not a bee, Piglet signed as he walked home. There's nothing that special about me. Suddenly, a cold wind blew around Piglet, whisking his little hat from his head. Piglet watched it disappear into the woods as the snow began to fall softly all around him. Yahoo! Boom! Tigger, Tigger's familiar voice as he bounced out of the trees holding Piglet hat, Piglet's hat. Is this yours, Piglet? Thanks, Tigger, Piglet said, taking back his hat. I'll be needing that more than ever now. Looks like it's snowing. Isn't it great? Laughed Tigger bouncing in circles all around his friends. I love snow. Piglet looked down at his mittens. Tigger, come look at the snowflakes, he cried. They're beautiful. Tigger stopped bouncing long enough to take a peek. Wow, he said. They, that one looks just like a tiny star. Let's taste some, Tigger shouted, catching snowflakes on his tongue. Piglet opened his mouth and started to giggle. They tickle, he squealed. Makes me feel like bouncing, Tigger said as he bounced off into the woods again. Piglet just stood there watching the tiny snowflakes as they bounced in the air. They were so perfect and so very, very small, Piglet whispered to himself. Piglet continued on his way, wrapped his scarf a little more tightly around his neck. Long before long, he spied his friend Rue up ahead, looking at something in the snow. Oh, Piglet, come see what I found, Rue called out to him. When Piglet hurried over, he looked where Rue was pointing and saw a small nest. The wind must have blown it down, said Piglet. Together, they studied the little nest of twigs and grass. It was tiny, but sturdy with not a twig out of place. It looks so soft and snuggly inside, Rue said, just like Mama's pouch. 
I wonder what kind of bird made it, Piglet said. It's awfully small. I know, Roo said. A hummingbird. They're the smallest birds of all. Piglet carefully placed the nest in a nearby bush. I'm glad they were able to save that hummingbird's home, Roo said. Me too, Roo replied. Now I've got to get home. It's nap time. And with that, he was on his way. Piglet stood before the little nest, picturing how safe and warm and cozy it must be for the hummingbird who lived there. Hmm, Piglet thought. Geese are small. Snowflakes are small. Hummingbirds and their nests are small. Maybe being small isn't so bad after all. Of course, I still can't reach tea, Pooh's teacups. And feeling just a bit better, he began to whistle and skip through the woods. Piglet might have gone on whistling and skipping if he had not run into Eeyore, who was sitting glumly in the middle of the path. Hello, Eeyore, Piglet said brightly, hoping to cheer up his friend. Oh, it's you, Piglet, Eeyore signed. What's the matter, Piglet asked. You look sadder than usual. Eeyore signed again. Look, he commanded, turning slowly in a circle in front of Piglet. It's happened again. Piglet looked closely at Eeyore. Your tail is missing, he guessed, hoping he was right. Eeyore nodded. It blew off when the snow began to fall, he explained. Piglet thought about all the fun he had had catching snowflakes on his tongue, but one look at Eeyore made him decide not to mention it. It's under that bush, Eeyore continued, but every time I get to it, all the twigs and thorns catch my ears and scratch my back. I guess this time my tail is gone forever. Don't worry, Eeyore, Piglet assured him. I will get your tail for you. And marching up to the bush, Piglet took a deep breath and crawled underneath. There was the tail, all right. Piglet stretched out his hand and grabbed it. But before he crawled back out, he looked up through the bushes and twigs, branches. Here and there, sunlight glistened on the tiny patches of snow. And there was a delicate cobweb hidden among the leaves. It's a shame no one but me can see how beautiful it is in here, Piglet thought. Here you are, Eeyore, Piglet announced as he emerged from under the bushes. Good as new. Oh, thank you, Piglet, Eeyore cried gratefully as Piglet pinned the tail back in place. How wonderful it must be to be small like you. Piglet waved goodbye to Eeyore and continued walking towards home. How wonderful it must be to be small. How wonderful it must be to be small. He repeated over and over to himself. Later that day, as Piglet sat in his small chair in his small house, a big smile came across his small face. Yes, I do believe it's wonderful to be small indeed he decided at last. So Piglet decided he'd like to be what he is anyway, and I hope that you are all glad that what you have because you've been thankful that God made you special too. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.